Hello and welcome to Matt's ICT Lab. Now today we'll be looking at some basic settings, mainly page layout settings. Okay, uh, items three to six in the list are page layout settings. The other two are just two other basic settings you should know about. Okay, so <coughs> first thing is font size, and we'll be using this document here to to edit. Okay, just so we can try these things out. So font size, very simple. Highlight the text you want to change the size of, go up to the font size option and you can choose your font size from here. Okay, you can also use the grow font and the shrink font options, but you don't get as much accuracy. You can't choose a specific font, it just, just makes it slightly larger and slightly smaller. Let's leave it on 36 just now. Size 36 PT point. Okay, um, and we'll give it an underline. It won't. We'll make it bold. Let's leave it bold. Okay, uh, that's your font size. Not much to that. Next thing is your font face. Okay, and we'll be looking at serif and sans serif fonts. Okay, so with your font face, if you select your, your, uh, your text here, okay, I've selected the body text in this case. Go up to this option here next to the font size and you can change the font face. Okay, and you can see all the, the font faces there. And the good thing about Microsoft Word is that you can see the font face before you choose it, so you know what it's going to look like, so you know you're not going to choose something like Chiller for a professional document. That's a bit overwhelming as well. Okay, now two things you do need to know about font face are the difference between your serif and your sans serif font. Usually in IGCSE exams they'll ask you to, to apply uh, or to make your text serif or sans serif. So here on the left we can see an example of serif font. The serif font is basically what distinguishes a serif font are the strokes that you can see here at the bottom, at the ends of the T. Okay, and with your sans serif, we can we can see no strokes there. Okay, so serif with the strokes, and sans serif without the strokes. Okay, and these are the two categories of font. So what we'll do is we'll just highlight our serif font, and we'll just have a look at some other option, other a. Uh, examples as well. So let's take Batang here as a good example. We can see the clear strokes coming from the end of the T there. Okay, let's see what else we've got. Just scroll down to just run at random. There's Garmond and again quite distinguished strokes there at the end of the T. A there we go, there's a there's Consolas and that has a sans serif font, as we can see there are no strokes at the end of the T. Alright, so it's not just T, obviously. Let's choose a G. Let's not choose a G. Let's choose an R. Okay. And we'll have a look at this. So there we go. Even with the R we can see quite clearly the strokes on the ends of the letter there. Okay, and there you go. That's the difference between serif and sans serif. Now, in your exam, you may be asked to apply or to, to make your text serif or sans serif. What I would recommend is using uh, Times New Roman for your serif and Arial for your sans serif. You can't really go wrong with these two, uh, but it's up to you. You can really choose whatever one you want. Okay. And let's go back to our document. I'll say you can choose whatever one you want within reason. You know, make it something sensible. Okay, um, now the default font in uh, Microsoft Word is Calibri, but I'm going to change this back to Arial. Change it to Arial. And there we go. Okay, back into our page layout setting. So next thing is page orientation, very simple. Let's go to our document again, and page orientation is in uh, page layout, it's under the page layout tab at the top there. 
So within orientation, we can change it to either portrait or landscape. Now, when I'm doing this, especially if you've got a few pages, I tend to zoom out so you can see the whole page when you're changing it there. Okay, I'm going to leave mine at portrait just now. Okay, so there's the two options. That's pretty much nothing else to do. Right, okay, page size. So your page size up here again in your page there tab you've got your different page sizes now you can go into yes more paper sizes and so on and you can specify a specific width and height but in your IGCSE exam you'll only be asked to choose one of the options here okay so you may be asked to make it page size A5 or A4 or whatever so I'm going to choose, choose A5 and make my page a lot smaller there Let's just zoom in a wee bit. Okay, moving on. Page margins. Now, page margins is where a lot of people tend to panic a bit. Okay, they are very simple to use them. Okay, all you do is you go up to your margins tab under your page layer and go to custom margins. Okay, and we can see the top, bottom, left, and right margins here. Okay, now they're set in centimeters. If they were set in inches and you wanted them in centimeters, we can change that as well and I'll show you how. We go to File, Options, Advanced, and then scroll down until you see Show Measurement in Units of, and you can change that from inches to centimeters, or even millimeters, depends on what you want. Okay, we'll leave ours as centimeters just now. Okay, that and go back into our margins and we can see our settings in centimeters there. So I'm going to make my margins 2.5 centimeters as opposed to 2.54 centimeters. So let's do that. I'm just going to leave this. You can just type the full thing in. Okay, and you don't need to put cm after that centimeters because we've already told Word that we're dealing, uh, that our measurements are in centimeters. Okay, so I'll OK that, and this should change ever so slightly when we do this. There we go. Ever so slightly changed our margin settings. Now, you may have also noticed in here that we have this gutter option at the bottom. So basically, if you're looking to bind your document, if you're looking to bind your document with our ring binder, for example, at the top, you may want to put in a gutter. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put in a quick header here, just so we can demonstrate something else. Now, we'll look at headers and footers in a separate video, so there's quite a lot to them, but I'm just going to put one in here. I, okay, I'll put my class. For example, okay, I close this, and I'm going to put a gutter in here. So page layout, margins, custom margins, and I'm going to put a gutter of two centimeters in here. And the gutter position is going to be on the top. Now you can see the preview here. The gutter is just a blank section they're going to put in the top there so you can bind that and you're not going to cover up any of your text. Okay, so okay that. And then we can see there's a big space being opened up at the top here where we can bind it. But the problem we've got is our header hasn't moved down. So our header is going to be cut up in the ring binding and you won't see it, which is no use. So we'll open up our header options and the header from the top is 1.27 at the moment, 1.27 centimeters. But we added a 2 centimeter uh, gutter. So we'll just add our gutter to this and make that 3.27 and then close that and then your header and footer is now moved out of the top section there and that's not going to get caught up in the ring binding when you go to bind it. Okay, and that's your margins. So page layout, margins, custom margins, top, bottom, right and left. Put in the, the measurement asks for, if asked for a gutter, put in your gutter as well in the position and if it's at the top you may need to move your header out of the top just by changing your header from the top options here. Okay, let's see what else is next. Finally, columns. Okay.
Okay, let's go back to our document again. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change this paragraph here only into two columns with a line between and, a, uh, and I'm going to specify my set. So again into page layout and if you're not sure where, where these options are just have a quick click through them and you'll be able to find them. Okay, be able to find whatever you're looking for. In this case it's page layout, looking at columns. Now I would recommend not to choose columns from the, the preset list here. Okay, you'll most likely be asked to do something specific to your columns. So go into more columns and you can change your column settings here. So I'm going to choose two columns line between, see the preview is starting to take shape and I'm going to put a 1.5 centimeter space between my columns and maybe a bit like this see how that looks. yeah it's a bit big I'm, going to change that. I'm just going to put a 1 centimeter space between 1 centimeter space between my columns ok, there we go, that looks a lot better ok so to review what we've looked at, we've looked at our font size in the home tab, two places we can change it, through our specific numbers here, and through our shrink and grow options. Oh, sorry, one thing I forgot to mention is that when you're changing your set, your font size, you can actually just type in a specific number. So we see we've got 36, and then we go straight to 48 here. If we wanted 37, we would just type in 37, press enter, and the text size would change to 37. Okay. So font size, font face, we looked at our serif and our sans serif font, and what distinguishes between the two, which is the strokes at the end of the letter there. Okay. We look to page orientation, very simple, two options, portrait or landscape, choose one, whatever one you've been asked for. Page size, again, quite straightforward, you're asked from, for one of these from the list, so you just choose whatever it is you've been asked for. Page margins, again, this one gets a wee bit more tricky, into your page margins, custom margins, and you can set up your page margins there, including your gutter, your gutter position. And then finally, columns. Again, into column settings, into more columns, and you can choose the column settings there. Okay, and that was your basic page layout settings. Okay, hope you enjoyed this video, hope you find it useful. Be sure to check out my channel and subscribe. Thank you.